All right, so finally have the Mac mini over here. Excited to check it out, unbox it. And for the most part, I wanna compare this to my Mac Studio, the first generation Mac Studio. This is the one right here. This is the product or this is the computer I've been using for the past year or well over a year at this point to edit almost every single video you have seen on this channel. So I wanna use this as a reference point to compare this computer. And I think that's actually a really good reference point because I feel like a lot of people who are considering buying this computer are gonna want to get similar performance uh, you would expect to get from something like this. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how close this computer can get to this or maybe it will perform better or worse. We'll see, we'll find out, but enough talking. Let me just open this real quick. So let me get this out of the way, let's go. Okay. I think you've already seen way too many of these getting unboxed and you really don't wanna see another one. So instead of you skipping the video, I'll just do it for you. We're moving on, you're welcome. <laughs> First impressions, really like it, but of course it is a computer after all. So what really matters is the performance. How does it actually perform in real life? So that's the main part, but yeah, as far as design goes, this is really good, really like it. Now, when it comes to the ports, you can see obviously the Mac Studio has a lot more. This doesn't have as many. However, it does have most of the important ones. Like you've got your HDMI, you've got three Thunderbolt 5 ports. That's right, because this is actually the M4 Pro chip. This is not the base model. Now, one of the things I really hate about this computer is where the headphone jack is. It's really difficult to reach all the way at the back to plug in my headphones. And I'm constantly plugging them in and plugging them out. But thankfully, Apple has fixed that on the mini. And you can see it's at the front. And the thing I like about it is that now this is also a high impedance headphone jack. Now, when it comes to specs on the Mac mini, we have a 12 core CPU, 16 core GPU, 24 gigabytes of RAM, half a terabyte of storage, and we have gigabit ethernet over here. On the studio, however, we have a 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and 512 gigabytes of storage, and also 10 gigabit ethernet port, which is something I actually use almost every single day because I use a NAS. So that's another thing I wanna test in this video. And I'll actually edit this entire video on this computer to kind of see how it performs compared to my usual experience that I have with the studio. So this will really be like an in-depth testing when it comes to video editing. It's not gonna be just like one layer. It will be like multiple layers, effects, colors, and all sorts of things. So let's get into all of that. So I put the Mac mini exactly where my Mac studio usually is. And I plugged in everything that's plugged into my studio into the mini. And then I set it up. I downloaded all the important apps like Cinebench and Geekbench to test CPU and GPU performance. I also tested SSD speeds and the gigabit ethernet port. And I also did the exact same things for the Mac Studio. And I have the results. And the question is, is the Mac mini actually better than the Mac Studio? Does it perform better? Well, to my surprise, this thing is significantly better. And I was not expecting this because I thought this Mac mini would come really close to the Mac Studio, but not be better than it. But man, was I wrong because pretty much every category you look at, the Mac mini is better than the Mac Studio, except a few, one very obvious and other not so much, which I'll get to, but all the important ones are checked and this thing actually performs like really well. For example, when it comes to CPU multi-core scores, the Mac mini is like 1.5 times faster. And even for single core, it's faster. And probably the most impressive and the most unexpected, at least for me, was GPU because this thing, as we talked about, has 24 cores and this has 16. But when I ran the benchmarks, I couldn't believe that this thing is not only as good as a Mac Studio, it's better, like how? Okay, I think I know what's happening. So basically the Mac mini is able to outperform the Mac studio with fewer cores because the individual core speed on the Mac mini is faster than the individual core speed on the studio. That's why this is happening. So 99% sure about that. Also later in the video, I'll answer a few questions that you guys asked about the Mac mini, but I wanna answer one question right now because it's a really good question how do you add more ports to the Mac mini, especially USB ports, because this thing doesn't have any. Well, I think just getting a USB-C docking station is the best way to do it. This one's from Anchor and it's the perfect example of that. You get three USB-A ports right at the front. You get a USB-C port, which can also charge things up to 30 watts. So like a phone, 
perfect for that. And at the back, you have your HDMI ports. One's 4K, one's 2K, and you also have a 2K display port. So you can connect up to three monitors to this computer. And you get all these extra 10 ports by just connecting one cable to your computer. But something like this also works with just a laptop, like a MacBook especially, where you don't have as many ports. Like you only have two USB-C ports, right? This is where something like this makes a huge difference or even like a Windows laptop. So I personally really like USB-C hubs. I use one every single day and especially this one being from Anchor, I can recommend it all day because it's a brand I genuinely trust. And I'm sure a lot of you also know about Anchor. So I'll leave a link below, check it out. Now, when it comes to SSD speeds for external drives, the best we have available right now are Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 drives, which means that even though this computer has Thunderbolt 5, we can't really utilize all that extra bandwidth because we just don't have drives with Thunderbolt 5. So right now, both of these computers perform exactly the same when connected to an external Thunderbolt 4 drive. And also for internal SSDs, both of these are basically exactly the same. But the big difference with the Mac mini is that the SSD inside this is actually replaceable, maybe not user replaceable, but it is replaceable and that's really nice. That's a huge step in the right direction. Now, in the one thing this Mac mini is actually worse than the Mac Studio, other than maybe throttling. Wait a second, throttling? We didn't talk about that. That's right, we did not. So I'll mention it right now. So basically while running Cinebench specifically, this software to test the CPU, it also accounts for throttling. So it runs for a much longer time. And right now this is running on the Mac Studio and the Mac Mini at the same time. The difference is that on the Mac Mini, the fans are almost at full power, or at least what it sounds like because they are quite loud. This is actually the first time I've heard the fans on a Mac with an M processor. So here, maybe you can hear right now if I put the mic. And over here, nothing, silent. So that's the difference other than maybe throttling, is the ethernet port, the gigabit ethernet port this has compared to the 10 gigabit ethernet port the Mac Studio has. That's actually a huge deal breaker for me because as I mentioned earlier, I use a NAS. So I almost need to have a 10 gigabit ethernet port. So there's a huge difference. However, you can upgrade it on the Mac mini, but at that point, like you're spending way too much on this computer and you'd be better off getting something else. Like maybe just go straight to the M4 Max at that point. Now, I did say that I'm gonna edit this video on the Mac mini and I did. And overall, I would say my experience has been pretty good. Like eight out of 10. This was surprisingly similar to the experience of editing on the Mac Studio. And this is kind of what we're working with over here. It's not like one layer. A lot of this is multiple layers and effects, colors and text and whatnot. So, you know, this is just like a normal edit for me. It's not like some simplified version just to test the performance of this. However, I did notice a few things that I would like to show you. So while editing, I noticed that the GPU usage was very high almost uh, the entire time or most of the times, like at 100%. And I thought this is not great because ideally you would wanna have some headroom left. And then it also seems to be using a ton of swap memory. Like right now, it's not that much. It's This is normal actually right now, but at one point it went up to like 20 gigs, which I think is a bit too much. However, at that time, I did have a few other apps open as well, and I had been using the system for a long time. Okay, now we'll quickly answer a few questions that you guys asked. So the power button, yes, it is on the bottom, but trust me, it's not a problem, you'll be fine. On my Mac Studio, I think I've had to maybe use the power button five times over the past like, 13, 14 months of owning it. So it's not a problem at all. Is it good for video editing? Well, like I showed you this edited this video perfectly fine. So I think it's fine, but yeah, if you are handling some very heavy projects with some like 8K footage or something, then maybe the Mac mini is not a good option. But otherwise for like normal video editing, I think it's fine, it's pretty good actually. But remember this is the M4 Pro Mac mini, not just the base model. And then can you build a more powerful PC with the same cost? as the Mac mini? I think the answer is no, because based on this graph I saw on Cinebench, the closest thing that comes to the M4 Pro, it's actually worse than the M4 Pro, is a Ryzen Threadripper. So I guess if you can find that for less than $2,000 and then build a PC, maybe you could potentially build a PC that's just as powerful as this, but you definitely won't be able to get to this size and the power efficiency and all of that. So. I don't think it's possible. I think where it's really difficult to beat Macs, especially these M processors when it comes to CPU related tasks. 
However, if you are talking about GPU related tasks, then yes, a lot of PCs will outperform these. But yeah, overall, I really like this computer and just think about how good the M4 Max is if this is how good the M4 Pro is. And then what's even more exciting, I think, is the M4 Ultra. Like this being so good, the M4 Pro is indicating that the Ultra would be something like truly impressive, it would be a beast. So that's something I'm looking forward to and I'm excited to see what Apple has to offer over there. But that's all for this video. If you enjoyed watching, consider subscribing and I'll see you later.